Epic. Welcome to STEM. Today, we're going to be talking about pollination. Pollination is the process where pollen, or that, uh, that yellow sticky dust that's on the middle of flowers, is transferred from one flower to another. And that causes the flowers to be fertilized and make new flowers grow. And it's not only flowers, but plants, fruits, and vegetables are all here on Earth because of pollination. But how does the pollen get from one flower to another? Well, sometimes it can, it can be carried by the wind, but mostly it is carried by insects, such as butterflies or bees. In fact, bees are responsible for over 80% of pollination. That is a lot of plants that we should be thanking the bees for. So today I'm going to read to you a book called The Thing About Bees, A Love Letter. And when we're done, I'll tell you what your STEM challenge is. The Thing About Bees, A Love Letter by Shabazz Larkin. Note to readers, there are more than 20,000 species of bees in the world. The fuzzy round bees in this book are bumblebees. They make honey, like honeybees do, but in small jumbled nests. The neat and tidy honeycombs you see in this book are honeybee honeycombs. This book is dedicated to my sons, who teach me what it means to be fearless. When a bee and a flower love each other very much, a fruit is born. The flower makes a sticky yellow dust called pollen. As the bee drinks the flower's nectar, she gets pollen all over her hairy body. The bee moves pollen from one flower to another. Then, we wait, and wait, and presto, the flower turns into a fruit you can eat. This process is called pollination. Thank you, bees. Now here's the thing about bees. Sometimes bees can be a bit rude. They fly in your face and prance on your food. They buzz in the bushes and buzz in your ear, and they sneak up behind you and fill you with fear. And worst of all, they do this thing called sting. Ouch. You may want bees gone because their stings hurt, but if they were all gone, it would hurt much worse. Without bees, there'd be no picnics with watermelon. There'd be no more smoothies with mango. There'd be no more strawberries for shortcakes and no more avocados for tacos. There'd be no apples, which means no more pie. No more cucumbers, which means no more pickles. No more blueberries and raspberries for pancakes or sweet cherries to drizzle. Because some foods won't grow without bees to help them along. In a way, the bees are just like you. You. You buzz in the bushes and buzz in my ear. You sneak up behind me and fill me with fear. You fly in my face and prance on my food. You even sting when you're in a bad mood. But I never stop loving you. You're, you're my sweet cherry, 
the apple pie of my eye. You're my cucumber pickle, my bumblebee in the sky. You're my cold watermelon at a picnic in the park. You're the avocados to my tacos. You're my strawberry heart. <clears throat> Without those little buzzers, the world wouldn't know what to do. That's the thing about bees. We need them just as much as we need you. So, as that book says, without bees, we wouldn't have the fruits and the vegetables that we all need to eat in order to stay healthy. In fact, scientists say that if all the bees died out, the earth would lose 70% of all of its important crops. Now, that not only affects us as humans, but that would break a large number of food chains and animal populations all over the globe would be in danger. Right now, nearly 25% of bee species are in danger of going extinct. That's a big deal. Bees pop bee populations around the world are drastically decreasing and scientists are working really, really hard to save the bees. But my question for you today is this. In this world with less and less bees, how can we make sure that the plants are still being pollinated? I challenge you to design and build something that can get pollen or that yellow sticky dust in the middle of the flower from one flower to another flower, just like a bee. Now you can use any materials you want as long as you ask for permission from an adult first. Very important. And remember, do not get discouraged if your first design doesn't work. Engineers know that they are probably going to have to go back and adjust their design many times before they reach their goal. And that's okay, it's part of the process. So, remember, stay safe, try not to harm any bees, even if they scare you, and as always, have fun with it. I'll see you on Flipgrid.